Hi, it's Liz. Today we're going to go over the Excel column to number problem. We're going to use the Empire method. And if you haven't solved this problem yet, go ahead and just take a whack at it and see what you can do. If you get stuck, come back to the video. But if you can solve it, um, what I want you to do is compare your problem solving process with our problem solving process and just see where the two differ or if they're basically the same. Okay. So, very first thing that we need to do in the umpire problem solving method is understand the prompt. So, the prompt is, given a column title as it appears in an Excel sheet, return its corresponding column number. Alright, so, so let's look into this. Um, okay, so what are we, what is our input? What is it that we're trying to do in the middle? What's our key action and what's our output? So our key action is to return something, right? So in the middle, that's what we're doing. We're returning. We're not counting. We're not discovering. We're not finding. We are, we are returning uh, a transformation. What are we returning? Well, we're returning a number. The corresponding column number. So that's going to be a number that we're getting, giving back. And then what are we taking in? Well given a column title as it appears in an Excel sheet. All right, so we've got to think about all the different types of columns maybe that we've seen in an Excel sheet. So if you've seen Excel, you may know that A, B, and C are the first three columns. But what you might not have seen is an Excel sheet with longer than 26 columns. If you go past column Z, what happens is you loop back around to A again, but with two digits this time, so there's AA, which then advances to AB. We can kind of think of this as a base 26 number, right? Because each letter in its corresponding place value allows us to uh, get a number out that's the same each time. So if we want to think about, okay, place values, and how do we deal with that? Well, let's think decimals. We're, we're familiar with decimals. We've got 10 fingers, so we're all kind of used to decimals, right? But we know that if, you know, you have a number like 27, well, that's actually 20 plus 7, right? If you break that down. Or if you have, you know, 2,389, that's actually 2,000 plus 300 plus 80 plus 9, right? Each digit actually means a whole number here, a whole group number, right? And when we add these all together, we can combine these numbers into one single number. So if we think about A or like, you know, B, C, B, D, F, right? So B, it's actually B, uh, or uh, 2, uh, and then D is 4, and then F, A, B, C, D, E, F, that's 6, okay. So we've actually got 2, 4, and 6, but um, it's not 2, it's not t 200, right? It's actually 2 times 26 to the power of wherever it is, right? So this is the zeroth, this is the first, D, and this is the second. So 26 to the power of uh, 2. And then this is times 26 to the power of 1. And then this is 26 the power of zero. This is kind of how you express it in Python. This is the power of. So let's kind of see, okay, what is, um, let's go with what is 26 to the power of 2? What's well, 676? Wow, that's a big number. Uh, what is 26 to the power of 1? Okay, it's 26. What is 26 to the power of 0? Oops, that's 26 times 1. Let's look at 26 times uh, to the power of 1. It's 26. It's basically just like times 1. 
what is it times zero? Well, or to the power of zero. Well, any number to the power of zero is really just one. So if we translate this 26 to the power of one, that's actually just one. Now, 26 to the power, or yeah, to the power of one, that's actually just 26. But this, 26 to the power of two, well, that's 676. So then BDF is um, 676, 676 plus 26 plus 1. Um, and then we want to multiply those here. So let's do this. Let's figure out what's 2 times 676. All right, 1352. Uh, 4 times 26 is 104. And 6 times 1 is 6. So we can kind of replace those numbers here. And then 104 here. We're just doing some calculations. And then 6. So if we add all those numbers together, 1352 plus 104 plus 6, oops, plus 6, what we get is 1462. So BDF equals 1462. Does that make sense? Maybe. Well, let's kind of dig in here and see, okay, what was the operation here that we did? Um, let's get back to our um, 26 to the power of 2. And then this was 26 to the power of 1. And then this was um, 26 to the power of 0. So we've written out our calculation line by line here. And we can kind of see what happens? Well, the F is the, the furthest uh, right number. So that's kind of what happens to the furthest right number is it's, it's 26 to the power of 0. Then if we go left by 1 to D, uh, we're 26 to the power of 1. And if we go to B, we're 26 to the power of 2. So what we've got here clearly is some kind of loop. We're going to be doing the same set of calculations each time. But we need to start at 2 and end at 0. Or start at the highest you know, count of uh, how long the string is. And then go down. And then there's something else happening here. Well, we're, we're translating this B into a 2. And we're translating this D into a 4. Now, that's pretty stable. We know that you know, D is the fourth letter and F is the sixth letter. So we know that there's just a straight translation between the sequence of letters. Um, so how do we get that number out? Well, there is a, a function called ORD. And that basically just takes one letter at a time and turns it into a number. Let's look what happens when we call ORD. We pass in A. It's 65. Let's try it again and pass in B. See down here in my screen, uh, we get a 66. And then C, 67. OK, now what we want is 1, 2, and 3. And there's a difference that's stable here. 65 minus 64 is 1. 66 minus 64 is 2. And 67 minus 64 is 3. So we can make this translation happen without a whole lot of calculation. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, OK, what would happen if we just passed ORD, if we just passed oops, the column into uh, our ordinal function? what we would get is that number out. And then what if we subtracted 64? We've kind of got a stable um, transformation there, right? So I'm going to comment these out so that I can run my code and just check to see that the very first part of this problem is working. If you've never used the ORD function before, um, that's why we're showing it to you now. This is so that later in the future when you're working on any other problem that's similar, you can match back to this time where you learned about ORD and you learned that 
it uh, translates individual characters into their ASCII values. Okay, so I'm going to just call Excel to column number here so that I can experiment with it. In a whiteboarding interview, you wouldn't really be able to do this. But while you're solving problems, um, especially for the first time, don't worry to try to figure it out in your head. Use Replit, that's what it's there for. Okay, so Excel to column number, we'll call A. Um, I'll go A, B, and C. Here. I like to use copy paste rather than typing things out. Okay. Uh, cool, sometimes that happens. All right, I'm not getting any output. Well, that's because what we're doing here is returning. So what we need to do is print. Now I can really see, okay, one, two, and three. That is exactly what I wanted to have happen. Perfect. But now if I wanted to kind of take this and check, you know, a two column one, A, B um, is not going to return it. It throws an error. And the reason is Ord expects a character but got a string of length two. Now, Ord doesn't know what you want to do with a string of length two. You could be multiplying the values by 26 in the power of their place value, or you could be adding those values together. Um, there's all kinds of things you could do here, and so if Ord made a guess, it would probably be wrong most of the time, which is why Ord doesn't do that. It just says, hey, give me one character, or I'm throwing an error. Okay, so what we need to do is figure out how to um, translate this sequence ABC into um, three different characters and know where in the string are they, right? This one is the largest multiplier. Um, the first value A here is like this B here. B, right, was 26 to the power of 2. D was 26 to the power of 1. So somehow we need to start, we need to know that information, where is its position, and we need to know, um, you know, what is its character value. We figured out how to get the character value here, uh, and then we tested it. So we've solved uh, get the character value properly. So here's what I want to do is I want to look at each letter individually. Now, let me think about how I might do that. So I'm just going to write in pseudocode here. For every letter in the string, starting with the, let's see, uh, left most. Yeah, that's left. Oh, no, this is right. Sorry. Don't know my left or my right. Right most letter. Um, and then once I have each individual letter, uh, for every letter in the string and its position in the string, right? What I need to do is uh, convert the letter into a numerical value. Um, and then you may have noticed this as connecting to server. If you've ever had this problem, um, what I like to do is copy this, the whole thing, and then hit refresh. And then if your code gets eaten, um, you still have it. Okay, so let's see. Uh, convert the letter into a numerical value. Then what we, what we did down here was b became 2 and d became 4, so that's the numerical value. Then we multiplied, multiply the letter's value by 26 to the power of its position, starting left or right. Um, 
so what and then at the very end what we do is add the value of the above value to the total. So add the above value to the total. Okay, so I figured out I'm going to need a loop. I'm going to loop over every letter in the string and its position within the string, starting with the rightmost letter. Um, so I need two things here. I need every letter in the string and its position. And the other thing that I need to do is I need to turn the string around. I don't want to start with the highest value because um, then I'll have to count down, right? So really I'd rather count up. It's easier to count up, especially if we're thinking in position, right? 